Hey everybody, it's David here, and I'm going to be doing a little plein air again on Sunday morning. Um, it's a little bit overcast, um, but it's not going to rain. Can you imagine that? Me doing a plein air without it raining. Um, so we're on the Nippersink River here in Spring Grove, Illinois. And uh, let me show you the scene that we're going to be painting. And this is the scene we're going to be painting. And um, if you can see, I, I already drew it up. And um, most of the leaves are down. I'm going to put some, uh, probably a few more leaves on there than I like, um, than that, that are there. Only um, because um, up the river, up, up the ways, there was a little bit more color. Um, but uh, just take a look. Just check it out. And we're going to, um, I already have it drawn up, you can see. Let me just see if you guys can see that. So there's my palette. And there's my scene. And so we're going to be going and just pretty much doing the basics and um see the beautiful i mean down here this little part right there where the light is and this is our light and so basically when you're looking for a scene outside i'm looking again for big lights and darks and so here's what i have and I, that's what i have to work with uh, there's no sun to give me cast shadows and up in there in the corner up, upper left up here that's a church that's the spring grove church um a little catholic church i think to be bunch of people going into there in a little bit um, this is basically Spring Grove Illinois and this is the Nippersink River and so let's get started over here real quick I drew it up and I, I'm drawing it on and I did it on a board a um, hard board and I put gesso on there and so this is gessoed and so we're just gonna paint it from there and um, we start out with our lights and again um, lights being that everything like the sky uh, so up here the sky and then this right here, those are my lights. Lights, 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 all through there. Oh, it must be, what time is it? <laughs> oh, the bells are ringing for church to start. So, so we're gonna be, <laughs> that's kind of a nice thing to have here in the middle of the river, on the river. So we're gonna start out with just wetting my sky. And I have a little bit of blue in my brush. And this is again, board. <laughs> I'm going to have to wait until the bells stop ringing <laughs> for you guys to hear something. Hold on one second. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me. And so, I'm looking to see if everything's okay. So here and again, I'm putting putting a little bit of... Um, getting some paper towel out here. Okay, uh, we know it's... <laughs> the bells can stop ringing now. <laughs> That's kind of neat that the bells started ringing here right when we started. <laughs> so let's put a little bit of blue in the sky. This is light blue. Um, it's overcast today, but um, even overcast, there's a little gray, a little bit of gray in there. So I'm gonna make it a kind of a light gray sky. And this board um, is a little textured, so it kind of feels like an oil painting. And I did it with just a regular pencil. I draw with a regular pencil. I'm putting a little bit of the light, light blue gray in here. And then the gray of the pencil will also kind of make my, my pigment a little bit gray also. And so I keep on looking back to the window here just to see if everything's going on, everything's okay. And so now, I'm, like I said, I'm putting on my lights first. And so there's my light, light is lights. And that's the basically the water and um, some of the foliage now. And I'm gonna take some of the orange, like the light orangey. There's some leaves back here. They're gonna be nice and light and orange. And we're gonna speckle it a little bit. And um, we are gonna put a lot of those leaves in later on with probably white paint, more opaque. Um, this is my lights, and so the background actually behind these leaves are going to be darker, so that's the reason I'm putting them in now, and I can, I can put the other parts in later, the dark grays, because it's an overcast day, so um, you're going to get pretty much a lot of, and I'm working like a watercolor, which if I were working at like an acrylic or a, um, even a gouache, I would probably put those darks in first and put it thick on top of it, but because I'm doing a watercolor, I have to do the lights first, and so I can put the darks around it and negative paint them around it. Here's a little green on this side. I don't know if you can see that right there. There's a little bit of green right about there. And then over this area and up there, that's all the orange I'm putting in. 
And then these guys way up in the distance are the the um, the trees way up here. There's a little orangey, little orange leaves, and again, a lot of the actual min minimalist kind of um, when it comes to the little dots of trees or leaves. I mean, I'll be putting them in later with with my um, actually painting them in like like individually, <laughs> sort of individually. And look at all this stuff that you can see through that, all these tree branches. And so I want to come out to this morning also talk about trees and about drawing trees. And that's what my newsletter, if you if you ever if you don't get my newsletter, sign up for it on my on my website at beckerart.net. But I'm gonna be talking this week about trees and painting trees and drawing trees. I've had a some of the students have been been doing a lot of tree paintings with the with the fall being here and um and so I'm going to tell you what you guys are doing wrong. There's one thing that everybody's doing wrong, and I'm not going to explain it here. I'm going to let you guys know in the newsletter. So, so they get my, get my newsletter. <laughs> so here we're going to... It's like a big surprise. <laughs> not a big surprise. It's just that everybody's been doing a lot of trees, and I, I just noticed something that a lot of you guys are doing with your trees. And I'll explain that in my newsletter this Tuesday. And so I came out today take some shots of trees and also to do a little video probably later on about how to draw trees and draw them correctly because they have kind of an anatomy to them and um you gotta almost make it like it's a person basically <laughs> and here i'm putting in my lights again see all my light colors and so we're just putting this in really lightly and my board is all wet right now my board is really wet and I'm just putting my lights again, my lights and my greens and my yellows and and yes, it is very dull out there today and um but that sometimes can be nice and moody, but I noticed that um that's the one thing I've been talking about with cameras. cameras don't allow it to be you know cameras don't allow the mood to be shot, and so sometimes, like with the photo with it right now with the with the scene you're seeing it's gonna be you know it looks a little brighter. But it's pretty close to what it is. But when you go to take a, sh a shot of it and a picture of it, all of a sudden it becomes very, very bright and very um, a lot brighter than it actually is. So that's why, why um, I'm going to start using my regular SLR camera to start taking pictures of the actual paintings when I get done because I haven't been able to get the right mood because this is a very moody scene. It's very low-key. You know, It's not really bright. It's not a lot of sun. You know, so you're getting a lot of grays, and then it's all these grays. So I'm putting in the background now. I'm going in here, putting in the background. I'm using it pretty thick, but it is still as wet, and so I'm not getting, you know, I'm getting the softness I want back there. And right through here too, there's a softness back there, and it's kind of gray. And then it'll make this these leaves right here, which is the reason it attracted me to this scene right here. Is that right there the the leaves? See this patch of leaves right there, the yellow. That's what I really liked, and so that's what I want to come across with. I want you to see that part more than anything else. So then these grays back here, I'm going to take it right through the tree trunk. So the trees are actually darker than the background, so I'm going to take them right through here. And this board acts very, um, it softens everything up really well, just like paper. Uh, when you use this gesso ground, it's called absorbent gesso ground that I'm using on it to create the surface. And I, I need some violet. Where's my violet? Is it my violet? I think my violet's over here. I need to get one palette for everything. My studio, and so I don't have to look for colors. I noticed that I, I've been, I have too many palettes, and I'm actually trying to invent one right now, but I'm still, still working on it. And, but I do love to have a palette that's all the same. <laughs> so I can reach for the color and know exactly what color I'm getting going into. And I also want to be able to switch them around. And that's what my palette, my new palette will be when you can switch things around in. All right, so here's a nice gray, nice violet gray. Let's see, where is that violet? So what color is this here? It's kind of a reddish gray. That's, a, that's okay, we'll do that. And I'm going to put a couple of little tree trunks back here. I don't want that to go right into my water yet. Because the water here, if you look at it, it's kind of grayish, you know, grayish and a little bit of earth tones in it, like yellows are, and the yellows from the trees and the 
the oranges from the trees are, are in there. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to get these darks in here. Or middle tones. I'm actually at my middle tone, large middle tone stage. So I got my all my lights. Remember, I got my lights. I always do everything in three stages. My paintings are all done in three stages. The first being the lights, which is gives me my colors. The second, my large, mediums, and darks. And that's what I'm doing right now, my large, medium, and darks. Just putting them in there. See how nice and soft the edges are because everything's wet. And here off this little bit of land there, it's going down. And if you're asking questions, um, I can't look <laughs> and see your questions, so um, leave them on there and uh, maybe look at them later. I don't see them. I'm right behind the painting. I am behind the camera, but... All right, I see Sonia. Them always fun to watch. Okay, so <laughs> thanks. So I'm just going to put this on here. And then this is all going to be light down here, and it's going to have a lot of the reflections. Middle tones again coming in. My middle tones is what I'm working on right now. Here's a little bit of middle tone on the land. My darks will create edges, then. My darks create objects. That's what you wait for the to do. You wait for the um, darks to create the actual objects. Right now, I'm just getting my big areas of light and dark. My lights are there and my mediums are there and then you'll go to your darks. My large darks are, are coming up, bigger. But first you do the mediums. And medium I can go either way with. I, I can make the mediums go into the light area or the dark area because that's not um, really what determines the big picture of lights and darks. I look for the big picture being, I look for the black and white of it, of the scene. And um, so I, I do that in my mind, kind of. I squint my eyes and I look and I see um, if I got a big picture. of So everything except for the sun, I mean the sky, the sun, the sky and the river where it's light, that's my lights and that's my whites. And then the leaves, the yellow leaves and some of the tops of the uh, leaves basically are also part of the light. But there's middle tones, so they can, they can be pretty much into the dark too. Um, so I'm going to get parts of it into the light. And so that makes a pretty good pattern that's not so separate. You know, you want to make sure that your pattern is not so separated by tons and tons of lights and darks all over the place, not coming together in, in a big area. See, like I can do this big area right here of medium tone. And even though there's a lot of different little leaves in there, but you just generalize it. You generalize the whole area so that you have that value all generalized. Like down here where the water is, that's really dark right here. I'm just going to generalize that as a big area of dark. And then you can put the other stuff in there, the little medium stuff. You can still put it in there, but later. First, I've got to get my big areas, kind of my foundation for all this other stuff. i got to get that in there first. The same thing with under, over here. There's some darks in there underneath the river, right where the river meets the land. You're always going to get a little bit of dark right there. I'm always going to get a little dark right there. Unfortunately, let me just push this up a little bit because I can't see my painting in the in the meat in the All right, there we go. So see how I'm getting big areas. I mean all these big areas. This is the light um, That's a, that's right here. That's right there That's gonna be that that part and it's kind of lighter than I wanted it to be But I can still put in the darks that are gonna be in there and then I'll put in the heavy 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 duty um, leaves the ones that I'd be Really actually kind of thick. I'm gonna make those kind of thick now I'm going to go with my round brush because i got to get some of the detail now in there. And um, this down here, I was going to maybe determine to be these weeds that are down here, but now I'm not sure if I want to even put them in or if I need to put them in. Oh, boy, let me think. Yeah, I'm going to put them in. I think it would be nice to have a foreground, so I'll just put this in like as a foreground. And... All right, let's go over into the background again and start working our way from back to front. And so back here, I want to spatter a little bit of the the trees. There's a, those trees way distant. Trees are actually kind of warm, but I'm going to make them a little bit cooler so they stay back there. And I'm going to do just the tops of the trees, and they're kind of like... They're just little squares. When I squint my eye, they're just little little rectangular shapes. And then there's the tree trunks of the actual trees back there. And you can do them really lightly. Because again, they're in the background and I don't want to make contrast to them to bring them up. 
and they actually cover up the church steeple where the bells were ringing right there. You can, you can see that, but I'm not putting the church in there. It's just, um, I, I'm just not going to do what I'm going to. <laughs> it's just too much to work to do right now. I just came here for the river. And if I were doing a big painting, you know, like one in the studio, then I would possibly put them in there and I would draw that all in, And but not today. We're just going to try to get this done very quickly and just get get in and get out. I have a big yard to, um, my mom's yard needs um, the leafing, <laughs> the leafing. And so I'm going to get over there and um, blow all her leaves down to the river or down to the pond. But before that, I thought I'd come out here and just do a nice little fast plain air I haven't done for a while. And I was really, um, I loved these last two days. We've had some really, really thick, thick um, fog in the morning. Oh my God, it's so thick that you couldn't even see in front of you. So that's um, kind of got me out here. And I thought I haven't, I don't have any plans for doing any plain air re um, soon. But because um, last time I was doing these, I was getting prepared for the the one plain air event but um it's fun just to get out here and just get some painting done so now the leaves up here let's go and get the leaves up here it's gonna see what i'm doing is i'm just taking my brush and just tapping it down just tapping it straight and it's breaking up the the tip of it and so then i get myself these nice little nice little leaves right it just looks like little leaves that's all it is a bunch of little broken up areas in there and put branches in there over here will get a little bit darker. So we'll get a little bit darker with some of these leaves. Those are the ones that are next to the sky. And then these up here, there's a, this whole bush right over here. Uh, if you can see this right, this this area right here, that is um, that's a lot of branches. But I'm just going to go in here and again just get the basic big areas first. Big areas. Try to get darker faster. Where's my brown? Oh, that's a dark green. How do I have a dark green in there? <laughs> oh no, that's that's connected on gold. <laughs> like I said, this is my this is my other palette, so I'm not used to this palette, my plain air palette, and I've been using my studio palette for the last month, and now getting back to this one, it was like, oh boy, I need to get one palette that's all the same, big and small. This is a little bit smaller than my other one my studio palette that I teach with my classrooms. So let's see, get a little bit more yellow into this mix right up here. Problem with um, working outside here like this, what I'm doing right now is that this is not going to dry. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of um, feathered edges because this is, it's a day where it's damp. It's very damp out here and so to get stuff to dry is almost like impossible so i just got to use the paint very thick you know to make it dry for my for me so i'm actually taking the the paint almost like almost like a um like a gouache now and i'm just going to go in there with gouache kind of feeling of thickness to the paint and that way i can get it to not run and you know i can get it to stop from um also give me a soft edge which I uh, always encourage everybody to get, soft edges. I mean, I'm always into talking about getting your soft edges wet into wet. But when you don't want them, you know, like like for these trees right here, I don't really, I want them to be hard. This is my center of interest. So I'm going to go in here with the trees now and get some of them through there. And, and I'm not going to do exactly like what I see, but I, I kind of like look at that. Okay, there's this one in front, so I'll do that one. And it, it's pretty thick, so see, it's not blending as much, but it is blending a little bit. And so that's the part I was trying to avoid. But again, when you're out here and it's, you know, not going to dry on you, you just, you got to figure, okay, I just got to make it thicker. Just got to make it thicker. Thicker paint. And then we get the branches coming through here. See how everything is softening up, even those little dots I made is softening up. So I, I have to basically go with thick paint. And that's where the oil painters have a nice, and even the acrylic painters, when they work thick. That's the thing about plain airing when you're in a scene like this where, you, where nothing dries. <laughs> so you have a little bit more of an advantage than if you're using thick paint to get your hard edges. Because watercolors get their soft edges by wetting everything really wet. And so can't let it dry. 
If you don't have a dry surface, you can't get a hard edge. Okay, I'm just going in here. Let me go to my other side of my camera, like on this side. So we're gonna go through this side. When we're doing this foliage here, I just noticed I, I should go also and make that kind of thick also. Get some of my lights back. Well, I am going to go back in with my lights and go and get these things like really light on top of that. So I can go in here with a darker color and then put the put the lights on top of that. So let's just go crazy with some, a lot of branches in here for now. And then I'll go back into this area with some dark washes and then I can just go crazy with the leaves. And I'm just going to whisk a few of um, these um, leaves. And so I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to use a side of it and just wisp. Wisping it look, makes it look like these little fine branches that are on the tips of the, of the leaves. You can just wisp it. Meaning I'm just using the side of my brush. And I'm just kind of flicking it this way. Getting a little bit of color in there, value. I'm trying to get some darker values in there. And so then later on when I go in with the dark, dark colors. When I go with, I mean when I go in with the light colors later on, then I can just put that opaquely right over top of that. Here it did see how it bled the branches. That's fine. I'm just, like I said, I'm gonna use it even thicker later on. So now I'm getting the background darks. I didn't get them dark enough here I thought. This absorbs so much that I, I'm not used to it. And so this is like the third wash I put on there. But it's just softening, but always just getting lighter too because I don't have enough pigment in my brush. So you just compensate for it. You do it again, you just do it again, and just keep on going. And so I'll go in here again and just get them a little bit darker. Wisp at it again. I'm gonna wisp it in the background here. And when I say wisping, I, I basically use the side of my brush and I just kind of scumble it scumble it across the paper or your or your board like i'm using board so again getting the big picture first big picture is always more important than everything else now this tree is actually very you know it's all the leaves are lost and so i'm going to take my rigger brush and real quickly put in some branches and then wisp some of the, the fine branches so the main branches i'll put in with my with my rigger meaning the long, thin, skinny one. And so I'm just gonna go in here and just put in these branches. And I, I jerk a little bit when I do this. I don't make them look like like little rounded branches. These are, they go and they kind of twist and they turn when it comes to another branch, another branch comes. And so they're very gnarly, I guess you could say. <laughs> and, um, and that's one of the things that I'll be talking about in the newsletter. That's one of the big important things is that you don't make it look so snake-like and wobbly no wobbly branches they're not wobbly they're not like little they're not this where you go like that they're not that they're not snakes they're um, nice and nice and flat they go up and they do turn here and there but on a harsh edge on a hard corner so again i'm trying to feel out this little bit of foliage there's there's branches and the top of this there's a bush right here, and, and there's all this stuff, and that's all light. And so behind here, I'm covering up some of the light because there is more of the darks back there. I'll go back to my other brush. And then this will be, then i put my yellow orangey top right on top of that, you know, opaques, and that'll give it a nice look. Now here I'm going to wisp a little bit, wisp real lightly with this brush. You can use a fan brush for this too where I just really lightly touch and I make these little secondary branches and that's too dark. So I'm going to take and whip this out a little bit and then just do this again like this. All right, we go in there like that. And then back here, let's see, this is going to be a lighter, so behind it has to be a little bit darker, so I'll do that too. I'll make that more um, violety back there because I want it again to sit back a little bit. I didn't get it dark enough the first time underneath here and stuff, and so I'm just going to go in here a little bit darker. 
you know, my intent was to make that darker in one shot, but you know, sometimes you just don't get it because you're working on a different surface or you're not quite sure how much pigment to use. But you can always go back in, and by putting this dark here a little bit darker again, that gives me another pattern of dark, and then when that dries, I can go on top of that with thick, thick light, which is more, which is more yes, of a um, gouache kind of um, application for watercolor than it is the transparent, you know, watercolor. Because that, you'd have to keep this and web it out and, and put masking fluid down there and make it more in the first, in basically in the first wash. And so the water, it'll look like my water too when I get my dark darks in there. So now these branches are actually like my secondary branches. And so now I'm going to go into some really dark ones. I'm going to start getting some really dark branches in there now. So I'm going to almost make them violet because they are almost violet -y. They're very violet -y when you look at them. So look at how dark I'm going to make them. I'm just going to start out with a really dark dark. And I'll go up to gray and get my lavender in there. And these two brushes are, or these two trees. Yes, there's some warmth in there too. But I can, I can all put it in there while it's still, it's still this damp and I can put the, the redness in there. This is actually, um, this branch is a dead tree, and I'm going to make it part of this tree, though, that's live. These two, maybe I'll make this dark. And when you're outside here, there's so much stuff that you see that you have to kind of figure out what you want to put in and what you don't want to put in, or just generalize it. So I'm going to generalize this area right here with a meaning that I want to see a lot of little branches and stuff. So I'll just put a bunch of little branches in there and wor work around my... All right, who's, who's messaging me? <laughs> so go in here. Put a little bit of orange in here now. Still going to make it dark because I'm going to, again, bring in my lights later on. So now we got this dark coming through here and then got the lights in there, there, there. Okay, my darks are going to, my water, let's get a little bit more of my water. And then we're going to go into my really, really dark, dark details. Actually, this little piece of land right here that's in the middle of the river that I'm going to put in. I put this little bit of piece of river in there, or it's a little piece of land, and I'm gonna make it kind of orangey, looking like there is kind of orangey with leaves on top of it, because the leaves are what I want to make it look like. There's leaves on top of this little piece of land right here, and then we we'll also put leaves on top of things. And this is gonna be, end up being a lot more opaque because of because of not being able to let it dry, and so we're gonna be doing a lot of opaques in there, which is you know opaque watercolor is called gouache. And I'm going to be using white with that. So it's not really gouache, gouache that I'm using, but I'm using watercolor with white in it. Now it's different. It acts differently because gouache is meant to be used thick and watercolor, just regular transparent watercolor is not meant to be used very thick. So it's not going to be so thick that it's going to be a, a, a problem. I'm just not going to make it like an oil painting thick, like gouache, but I will make it thicker so it will cover up. It will cover up my my dark areas. And let's see, all these little, I'm putting in all the little reflections from the water. And actually it's more or less all inside the, there's like a reflection inside their big reflection. Like everything is really dark right down here. But inside there is also another reflection of the trees because that's kind of like covered up already um, in the main the main reflection of everything you know everything is in there and then you have the, the, uh, the little things in the side that dark area that's what people understand is that and also sometimes you can have a shadow on top of that too you know so there's there's a there's a reflection and there's also something you can see through so sometimes you can see through that and then you can see what's underneath so depending on what underneath this is pretty clean water, so I'm probably seeing a little bit of, this is very shallow, this, this river, so I'm probably seeing a little bit of the, the sand color down there too. Get some of these greens back in here. 
There are some greens, green leaves and stuff back here. I'll put them up there too. Makes it a little bit darker again, because again, like I said, I'm going to be going back in there with opaques to show the leaves. And then bring this, this reflection out there. It's, the water is kind of right here um, rippling because it's hitting this little pot and it's going to two areas. It's going one side, it's going a little darker right there. And so I've got to get both of those looking like, like it's darker behind it. Get the edge of that. But then this is rippled. And then underneath the... Anywhere the, anywhere the water hits the shore usually is really dark, almost black. Like anything that's in the water right here is going to be really, really dark, almost black. Because it's like, it's wet, it's ground, it's in, uh, uh, inside the area. There's something, you know, there's grasses and stuff and you just see inside there little by little. All right, let me get to the other side again. Let me just make this a little bit, this kind of ended up being weird. I'm sure I like that. We're going to have to rub that out. Let me rub that out a little bit. <laughs> rub that out. I don't like that. I get a tree branch. Go back to this side and get my, uh, my darks again. Thick darks. Thick darks again. Let's push it down a little bit. Violet in there. All right, so these trees now, this is my final application of these trees. So it's dry now, and so it's now I go in there without them getting all weird on me. And they're kind of grayish, and so I put a little bit of lavender into them, into the browns and darks. It's a lot of lavender in these trees. And that's kind of good because everything is or like yellowish, and I, find, I figured these greens are also kind of a yellowish, orange, yellowish, everything. And so violet is its complement, so. Let's make, I'm gonna have to make some of these up. <laughs> There's so many back here, oh my gosh, look at that. But I'll cover them up. I'll be covering up again with um, a lot of leaves. When you have a lot of branches like this, you kind of go for the main, you try to make them all a little bit different. Don't make them like a fence post where they're all the same. And so vary them up a little bit. And then also with the color, you can vary some of them, make them a little bit lighter, a little bit darker. i make this one a little bit more blue. And then right away, I'm gonna put them into the, into the water. Where they hit the water in the beginning, I'm just gonna put them. So this is the reflection into reflection I was talking about. See, it's like a reflection inside the, big reflection area we put there and it stops when it gets to the to the light part of the water because that's the showing the sky but you can put a little bit of more small reflections out here like really small little waves and again it depends on how detailed you want to get it this is going to be more a la prima where it's a, you're going thick in big area big broad areas now this tree can be dark again. This type, I'm going to make a little bit more effort on trying to, you know, show exactly where the branches are going, what they're doing. And those are the back branches, the ones that are lighter. So I'm not going to go over the, those. I'm going to make new branches, so the ones that there will be behind. Bring this down, nice and thick. This one. And there's a couple of trees next to it, and they have branches that come this way. Spend time on your branches. Don't just flick your wrist like this and just, you know, do that. That becomes very, um, it doesn't, look, it looks very amateurish if you do that. You want to go in there and actually, they have a, they have like a skeleton, these trees. It's, it's a, it comes from a dark, thick to a thinner, and then it branches out to very, very thin. And that's what you want to do. You want to make it look just like that. You can tell this is wet again because I'm, I'm getting the weird edges again, but that's okay. We're just gonna go with it this time. Kind of I'm 
And every time I do that, I always try to think, what's in the water? What can I put down here in the water that reflects that? I think I'm not going to put that land down there and just make this, continue this with water. I don't need to have a triangle in the corner. That's not a good thing to have. So it's going to make it water and reflection. Okay, let's put on our darks now. Or I mean, our, our really light lights and our darkest darks. I'm going to put this dark, this the shoreline one back here. So when it comes to do, using my, um, putting these oranges in there that are really light, with white, I basically use white paint, which is right here in my palette. I'm going to make it really super thick. I'm going to take white, I'm going to wipe off my palette here a little bit. And I'm actually going to make it opaque. I'm literally making it opaque. Super opaque, so it's really, really thick. And then I'm going to dab and get these little leaves to look like leaves. And right over the top of the... Right over the top of the darker color that's behind it, hopefully. Especially right here. That may be a little bit too bright. And so, I, I, again, I want to make it close to what it is. It's just barely, you know, it's, it's just lighter than the background. And they're kind of individualized. It'd be actually good if I brought gouache out. That would be the best thing because that would just cover it up in one brush stroke. But this is still transparent watercolor and even the white is titanium white, which is opaque, but still it's not meant to be used thick like I'm using it. Um, I should really get my gouache, my Holbein gouache out here, and that would work much, much better because it's, it's made for that. It's made for going in here now and doing these really light little dots of my leaves. I mean, this will work fine, um, but if you want to do it right, I would actually just go and get my my gouache paints and then make it a gouache, uh, which I think is really cool looking way of making these um, leaves in the fall. Because you're just gonna put a few on top, and just a few will make it look nice enough to make it look like wow, look at the trees right in front, and it looks like little leaves. And you don't need many of them just to um, give it a look like they're right in front. And I group them, I kind of group them in little patches and I don't follow the branches per se. Like a lot of people, what they do is, I can even um, do an area like this where I make it a little bit thicker and just cover it. So like some people, some, some people um, use the branch and actually put them only the leaf right on the branch, yes. They are on branches. They're definitely held on the branches, but they're such tiny branches you don't see the branch when you're doing that. So I always tell my students, don't worry if there's a branch there or not. Like right here, there's no branches. I didn't put any branches there, but there's probably a leaf, uh, so small a branch there that you can see that. So that's what I talk about when I'm trying to think that you don't have to make the branch there for every leaf. It's just, it's so small that branch that you can just, it's there, you know it's there. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this tree lighter than it is and they're I'm making this one look like there's leaves on it because that's the reason I want to do this painting to just one tree have it look like it's still full with leaves even though it's not I, I'm, I'm putting them back on they fell off and now I'm putting them back on there was a tree down the river down by the um, boat launch they have a boat launch or a canoe launch there and um, there was one tree there it was super bright but there was nothing else around it. There was nothing beautiful about the area. So I just didn't want to do one tree. I thought, I'll just make this one up. You know, you, you can make it up. See how suddenly it becomes, it starts looking like something when you have just the lights coming back on. So that the lights now are my final thing, which is more of an oil painting thing, where um, watercolors do use the darks the last. But here I'm actually doing a oil painting technique of putting the lights on after my darks, which is what oil painters do. And, and also gouache painters, because um, like I said, you're doing it on top and you're putting it on thick so it looks like it's in front of the object that you're, that you're painting. And put some leaves in the water too. You know, they're gonna be falling in the water and they're floating down the river, especially when it's windy out and you know, you get those days when it's really windy and all of a sudden there's tons and tons of leaves in the water. And they'll be on this little island here, and they'll be on the land. 
and they're, sometimes they're covered with so much to cover where all you see is the orange leaves. So that can happen too. So here I'm going to put a couple of little leaves hanging in the water. And they always group together too. And they, and they hang along on the shoreline here by the darks. They hang out, they hang out there. Um, you can't see it, but over here where it's not running so fast, they're all collecting over there. They're collecting in there. So you take parts of the river that you want to put in your painting and put them in there. You can do that after, and even though they're not there where you're actually painting, you can put them in other places too. Put a little bit of this orange over here. I'm gonna get a little bit more of the dark red because there's also a bunch of dark red, like a like a um, terracotta type of red or burnt sienna type of red. You can put kind of those leaves in there too. <laughs> they're playing Roxanne. Did you hear that? <laughs> Roxanne. I can still hear him. <laughs> Pamela says because there's purple in everything. Yes, there is purple in everything. <laughs> so let me get some more. Um... Also, even though... Um... You don't have to make all your all your leaves uh, bright and colorful. I might also do some that are not colorful at all, that are going to be like dull, because there is a bunch in there that look like tree branches, and just putting in little little leaves that are that are just dark, or maybe there are even birds flying in the in the area. All right, a little bit more, and then I'm going to be done here, guys. And just do a little bit more, a little bit more darks in here. And again, the shoreline, anytime, the, and actually this is brighter around the edge. And so let me get some more darks. A few more darks and we're good, we're good to go. I'm good to go to do some um, leaf, <laughs> leaf blowing. I'm putting in some nice, really vibrant um, dark branches again. Also, I'm going to put this reflection in there once I put them in. Put some branches in there. Use them nice and dark. Unfortunately, there's no birch trees right here. So, otherwise, I'd put some birch trees in there. But there are no birch trees in this area where I'm at right now. So, unfortunately, I will not be putting birch trees in. That's one thing you guys up in, in, in up there in Wisconsin have a lot of. Up in North Woods, which is beautiful. Right here, you'll see one once in a while. You see one or two, but this is not so much um, birch country. <laughs> All right, let me look at it through the camera one more time, and make call it quits. Okay, I think I still need to put some more light. A few more lights. Let's put a few more lights in, and then we'll call it quits. Some more light, brand, light leaves, light yellowish orange leaves, especially right in front here. Where's my center of interest? This is my center of interest, and I put a few more in there, it's covering up some of the branches because they're these are the leaves that are in front of the branches, and that happens a lot. You know, look how many branches are out there, or how many leaves are out there. And you simplify it, of course. You know, you're not going to put every single leaf in there. Unless you're a um, hyper-realist, then yes, you're going to put everyone in there. And you're going to be here a few, day, few days, or you do it when you get back at home. Now I'm also going to put reflections in the water of that color, too. I try to make it look better than the photograph a lot of times, or the real life. I try to think, how can I make it look a little bit different, or make it, you know, prettier. You know, I don't mind making it prettier than what it is. And now the sun is coming out, so I have to get done anyways. <laughs> Put a few little, and up here, little dots. See, look at it from the, the camera again. I'm gonna push it down a little bit and see. All right, I think that's about it, guys. I think I need a little bit dark speck here, and then we're done. 
just notice that behind this, if I if I push this back, push this back a little bit back here, then it'll pop out the leaves. Give it another layer. Make it really dark in here. So look at the thing, and then this is really dark right here. I put in my reflections of the trees into the water, and then we'll be done. I keep on saying we're gonna be done, <laughs> but it keeps that going, right? <laughs> and we'll get done right after this. Right after this. And here, a little bit of this going through here, coming down. Some really light leaves. All right, guys, I think that's it. Let's take a look and see. I think that's going to be it for me, guys. Hope you had fun watching. If you have questions, put them on there and I'll look at them later. Um, Barbara asked if I have a link to my plein air setup. No, I what it is is a, bait, a cookie sheet, and um, there's a couple of pipes. But I'm going to make one one of these days. I have a little bit of time now. I don't have a workshop in a while, so I'm, I'll be uh, making another one. And this is my setup for my camera. So if you look here, this is my setup, and this is the area. And um, I was going to possibly use this um, and make a make this my my plein air easel because it's a little bit taller. I can make it taller, and I can also I'm gonna make a bigger palette, I think, for myself. This is a little bit compact, and it's it's nice, but I'm kind of compact into it, and so we'll see. But there we have it, guys, and I will see you on on Thursday for my paint along. So come around on my paint alongs and paint along with us. This week we're gonna do some trees, and we may even do a river. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna see if I can get some shots now, and maybe we're gonna do one of those shots for next this coming Thursday. And so until then, guys. Have fun, have a great Sunday, and we'll see you on Thursday. Bye-bye.